Welcome to episode 53. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and you're listening to Who Did That Voice, where we take an in-depth look at voiceovers. It's a new year, and if you're like me, you are already thinking about warmer weather and taking that getaway to that tropical or exotic destination. Maybe you plan to travel to Walt Disney World or Universal Studios. No matter what kind of trip you plan, 3D Travel Company is the company for you. Just visit 3DTravelCompany.com and let them know that Trenton sent you from Who Did That Voice. Or you can book on www.whodidthatvoice.co and click the Book Now button. For a limited time, Who Did That Voice listeners can receive a Disney gift card for qualifying Disney and Universal trips booked and traveled by the end of 2017. Book today and travel away. Welcome to Who Did That Voice, the show where we take an in-depth look at voiceover. And now, here's your host, Trenton Larkin. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the show. Thanks so much for joining us for part two with John Stalker. If you missed last week's episode, please tune into that before you listen to this one. Now, before we get started, here are some of the clips from shows John's done in his career. And to begin, he played Beastly on the Care Bears. Beastly! Yes, your meanness. How bad are you? Oh, I'm the baddest of the bad, and even badder than that. Our special guest also played Toad on the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. I always wanted to be taller, but this is ridiculous. Here come the Koopa Troopas. Let's turn them into Koopa Troopas. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Oh, well, you know, you've gotten to play on... There's a couple other shows I would love to talk with you about. Uh, yeah. You got to be on Cops, which was yes. a great show. And um, do you have a story from that one? I actually do. It's like the only uh, the only series I've ever done where I got to play my own father. Oh, okay. Because like, because Long Arm O'Malley, Long Arm O'Malley's dad was an Irish cop from Ireland. Where else will Irish cops come from? Right, and. Um, but Longarm was a New Yorker, but his dad was, you know, that New York has that strong Irish yeah, yeah. tradition connection, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but I got to play my own father, and I would do scenes where I would talk to myself, basically. So, um, Longarm was a good guy. He had such a good heart. You know, I mean, it's funny because... Um, you know, I mean, especially I'm a Canadian. You're, you know, you're a, you're an American, and you know, there's there's so much conflict between sort of the public and police these days. Yeah, yeah. And you know, in so many respects, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, I will not comment on it because I don't want to get political. But <laughs> one of the kind of cop that everybody could uh, he could walk anywhere and do anything. But he was he was he had I I had that attitude when I went into doing it, right? Yeah. And, and Again, it was very cartoony, and and I and and but Longarm was probably the only straight character in the whole thing, right? F you know, fighting crime in a future time, and uh, <laughs> and he was a, he was a good character, and one of those ones where I wasn't doing a weird voice, which I kind of liked. Kind of got to be a more normal voice. Got to be a guy, just a a young cop eager to to serve. Right. But, you know, fighting all these weirdos. Right. <laughs> that was it was great because all the villains were were nutcases. Yeah, and I like I really liked the <laughs> fact I worked with a great group of guys, really great group of guys. Yeah, I remember it really, really well. That's great. Well, another big character that you got to play just recently came out in a feature film within the last couple of years, but you got to voice him back in 1999. That was Ultron yes. or Avengers United. They stand. What was that like getting to play Ultron? I loved it, man. I worked with a, I worked with a director who was so picky, but it's good. You know, uh, like uh, there are benefits to working with someone who's easy you know, because it's, well, it's when, you know, you just go in and you do what you're going to do. And then sometimes it's part of honing your skill to work with someone. You go, that's some of them. We know working on to get the voice. Uh, and then he was really exacting in every performance. And, you know, sometimes at the time you think this guy's just driving me crazy. 
and but you know it was really nice and uh it was really good and really learning a really great learning experience and i came up with a voice which was this when i talked it was really it was like so strange and and, and it was like and he went oh shit man that's I love that. <laughs> love that. <laughs> and, and that's uh, that was, uh, and I've used that voice um, oh half a dozen times since. Uh, not for any lead roles, but sometimes you know you get those those guest roles yeah. where they want okay, there's some some kind of spirit thing. How about this? Yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah, that's the. One. <laughs> so uh, you know, there's a. A wonderful payoff to working with all kinds of people with all kinds of demands. Absolutely. But yeah, working with that was great. And again, part of a franchise. I know there have been four different Ultrons. Yeah. yeah. And uh, hey, I'm one of them. That's great. <laughs> one of the most iconic villains in all Avenger history, you know? Exactly. So. Exactly. He's usually one of the most problematic villains, depending on how the stories are written uh, right. for the Avengers. And so right. to be able to play him is just like, that's yeah. huge. That's like Lex Luthor for DC, you know, exactly. in, in the Marvel aspect. So yeah, a hundred percent or yeah. the Joker or the Joker. Yeah. That's an even better picture yeah. because he's very sinister and he yeah, almost but, you know, maniacal. Upon but depending upon who's directing and the, and the, and, and sort of the, the sort of the general sense of the, the interpretation. Yeah. That you know, the character morphs into a different kind of being, right? And that's wonderful. Yeah, always. I mean, that's one of the wonderful things about animation. You know, when you're doing stuff like this, is like, I just love the fact that you you have to be kind of all things to all people. Yeah, and you find a specific and. And it, you know what, it either works or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, you keep working until it does work. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I have one last show I want to talk with you about. And then I have one other question after that. So I know you were on X-Men that aired back in the 1992 era. And uh, that was my absolute favorite series. And you played Creed on that show, I believe. Correct. So could you tell us a little bit about X-Men and your role with Creed? Or do you have any cool stories with that? Or I have no cool stories, okay. But uh, let me uh, let me tell you, it was the same director that directed me as Ultra. Okay, okay. So he was really, really specific. And again, it's a, you know part of a uh, you know part of a culture. Yeah. Right. To be you know that character, and it's still going on. I mean, as I guess as long as Stan Lee's alive. <laughs> I think long after he's alive. I, I think even after he's gone, I think well, it'll he, still be around. So well, you're gonna have to wait. I think Stanley may live forever. <laughs> he, may, he may be the only person yet to live forever. <laughs> I mean, the guy is like you know uh, him and Sherwood Schwartz, who you know c created Gilligan's, Gilligan's Island for God's sakes. I think he was like ninety then. Right? Wow. <laughs> Yeah, he's like 140 odd right now. You know these these guys that are the creative guys. I think the creativity keeps them going. Keeps, them <laughs> keeps their oh, blood pumping. I I mean it. That's fantastic. Well, I do have one last question for you, and the question is: What is the legacy that you want to leave behind, John? Oh boy, you know, I think I may disappoint some people. But it, I don't know if it has anything to do with my career. Uh, you know, I've been doing this for almost 50 years. And as such, I mean, there will be residual stuff. Um, but there's something really wonderful about getting older. Here, I'm getting all serious. But it's really, really true. You know, you start to realize that all the other stuff is kind of fluff. I'm glad I pleased people. I'm glad they're happy. I really, really am. And very few people that I know or that I see have been blessed to be able to do something in their life that pleased themselves and pleased other people. I, I have these great fans that I, I care very, very much about uh, and that care very, very much about me beyond what I've given them in terms of characters in the industry. Um, and, 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 and that's in both ways. Yeah. But the legacy I want to live, uh, I want to leave and it's going to sound so corny, man. You'll like, 
Some people will gag, I can guarantee you. I just want to, I want to leave behind that I was a decent human being, that I cared about people, that I, I, I loved my children, I was a good dad, um, I, I tried to do something to make the world better. You know, I, I recycled and I composted and, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. I, I just, you know, I just wanted to be a decent human being because I'm a real believer in energy and I don't believe people really, people are only dead when their memory is, go is gone. Yeah. And, and I want to leave that behind. I don't care where it is, how it is, how it's used. I, but I think if it's good energy that I leave behind, then something good will come from it. Absolutely. And a legacy in this regards didn't have to just be something of voiceover, but just the, no. the way you left it with life itself and just hoping that you've made a great impact on people's lives and been a benefit yeah. to others. I think that's fantastic. And family is a huge legacy. So, well, you know, you know. I mean, the other stuff comes and goes. It does. You know, it well, does. Uh, and, and I'm glad if people learn from me, steal from me. Go ahead. Shamelessly. You know, it's been, <laughs> oh, God, that's the only way. Yeah, shamelessly. Yeah. But you know, it's been a great run. It's not over by any means. No, I no. Will never retire. It's, um, you know, <laughs> again, I'm so fortunate. I'm in a business. I don't have to retire. Yeah, because your right? voice is forever. Well, the, yeah, voices go forever. And, you know, yeah. I start forgetting, you know, that I, you know, am I wearing pants or not? I got a problem. <laughs> but <laughs> that, yeah. you know, I could just keep doing what I'm doing. And, um, yeah. and, and that's what I intend to do. I've, uh, again, my I'll give credit to the guy who said it to me, uh, Chuck Rubin, who was the I mentioned was the director of Teddy Ruxpin and with whom I worked many, many times and was also helpful in my voice directing career and is retired in San Miguel de Ande, Mexico. He said, John, he said, you don't retire, you rewire. <laughs> and I like so that. I am officially rewired. <laughs> Fantastic, John. Well, thank you so very much for your precious time. Would you please give us a closeout today as Ultron and Beastly? I would love to, Trenton. Thank you very much. Uh, so signing off, this is John Stalker, and it's been a pleasure, pleasure, true pleasure being on this show. You're a wonderful host. Thank you. So, Beastly, what do you think? Did you have a good time? Do we? Who did that voice? <laughs> yes, Ultron. I mean, no, Ultron. I mean, I mean, I don't know what I mean. <laughs>Hope you enjoyed today's episode with John Stalker, the voice of so many amazing characters. And if you did, please stop on by my Facebook or Twitter pages by searching Who Did That Voice? I would love to hear from you. You know, a question you might ask yourself is, where can I listen to Who Did That Voice? That's an excellent question. You can hear us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, YouTube, and our website at www.whodidthatvoice.co. Click the Episodes tab and listen away. Well, everyone, that's all the time we have for this episode. Join us this Friday for our next special guest, Gary Chalk, the voice of Lord Viper from King Arthur and the Knights of Justice, Gutsman from Mega Man, and Optimus Primal from Beast Wars. You won't want to miss this episode. Hey, do you ask yourself who did that voice? Well, if you do, go to our website, www.whodidthatvoice.co, and click on the Episodes tab. Choose an actor, pick their name, and see pictures from the different characters they voiced in their career. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time for more discoveries on Who Did That Voice. <laughs>